What are you drawing, Ruby? The ocean? Nope. What? Grass? Nope. Thanks for helping paint, guys. <laughs> so the first thing that we do when we paint is usually use a product called Kills. If you guys have ever used this stuff before, it's awesome. We use it to cover, like, if we want to paint any wood, um, because there's tannins in wood that can leak through latex paint. Um, so we start with that as a primer. It also will cover up like stains, like smoke stains or just dirty, grimy walls really, really well. Um, and then for walls that aren't so dirty, we're using just a regular primer. So that's what I'm starting with. And then after this, we are going to use our High Hide White by Valspar. That's our favorite white to use. So this is what a tannin looks like coming through. See this kind of yellow and it cracks. So that's what happens when you use latex paint over uh, natural wood or anything that is stained. Um, it's not gonna cover it very well. Even if you did 100 coats of latex paint, it still could come through. So that is why using kills is important. It'll cover that right up. Need a ladder? <laughs> Almost got it. <laughs> I think you need a ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, is it is that is that good? Good job. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for helping. All right, so next we're gonna make sure all of our nail holes and our trim are filled with caulk. So you can see after we prime, there's like a lot of little nail holes and stuff from the old curtains. So basically you just take some caulk, squeeze it out, and then dab it with your finger. Pretty easy. So efficient. Yep, very official. Make sure it's nice and covered. So after that, there's a very crucial step, and that's taking a baby wipe to it uh, and wiping it. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna get fingerprints and smudges and stuff like that. The baby wipe does really well at just smoothing it out. So make sure to don't skip that step. So this beautiful crown molding we put up is actually three pieces of trim. I didn't realize that when I took it down, but when we put it back up, three pieces of trim. So there's a lot of caulk here. It was just natural wood before, but since it's gonna be white, you'll see all the cracks if we don't caulk. So it's gonna take me a while, but it's gonna look really good. And then you can't forget the baby wipe. Crucial. <laughs> baby wipe is crucial. Don't forget it. So whenever we can, we try to use our sprayer. Uh, we can generally cover an area a lot faster and also it just looks a little bit more professional. Um, so that's what I did yesterday. I have these walls all primed and I have a coat on. It only took me about a half an hour for each coat. We did this room and also the master bedroom. But what's great about sprayers is that you can actually just put uh, them into a five gallon pail and paint five gallons at a time. So you don't even have to stop. You just keep going until the five gallons is gone. Um, I went through about five gallons of primer uh, for two rooms. So I put it on nice and thick, but we had lots of smells and water stains and things like that to cover. Smells a lot better in here now though. We are rolling the great room. We couldn't spray in here because we wanted to keep these beams natural and also the fireplace. It would have been just way too much to tape off. So um, parts of the house we had to spray, which was awesome because it's like makes super quick work, but parts of the house I am rolling. So working at night a lot and right now during the day while Ruby's at school, um, I decided to paint this strip of cedar going around because I felt like it stopped your eye from like going up to the ceiling. So Jamie sanded that and skim coated it for me, which he was a little bit against. But once we caulk it and paint it, I think it's just gonna look a lot more seamless and bring your eye like all the way up like it's kind of meant to in this room. All right guys, so come on down. We wanted to show you guys a few things that we are working on outside. This is a huge property and we've had trees removed recently. We've been working on the pool, but come on down, we gotta show you this. So as much as we love our backyard, one main issue we have back here is that there's not any shade for the afternoon sun. So what we're gonna do is rip out this deck that is very bowl shaped and just odd. And we're gonna be pouring a cement patio here and adding a nice gazebo with a fireplace. It's gonna be beautiful for having people over and also eating dinner and things like that. Yeah, so the aesthetics back here right now are not super great. We got some uh, dishes behind us here for TV, <laughs> a lot of rotten wood, stuff like that. And we wanna transform this into just a beautiful place. So thanks to Sunjoy, we're gonna be able to do that. So back here, they have so much going on between the different tiers and decks. 
This one is like totally rotten. So we are going to rip this whole deck out and level it out underneath. And that down here is where our patio and our nice gazebo and fireplace are gonna be um, perfect for eating dinner and things like that. So I really want the vibes to be just very um, matching to our house, which is that old English Tudor style. So we're gonna have some greenery going on and just a cozy, nice romantic place. So we will show you an inspiration picture on the screen right here. Um, it's also like overlooking the woods over here. It's just gonna be such a cool hangout spot. The pool is over to my left here. So you'll kind of have that in view. It's just gonna be such a good spot. We'll show you on the screen the exact products that we got from Sunjoy that we are going to be putting right here, but they're so beautiful. I'm really excited. All right, so we actually already got our Sunjoy products. This is the fireplace, massive, and that's the gazebo right there. Um, but I was expecting these to ship, you know, in like three months or something. I was thinking they were going to take a long time to get here, but actually shipped really fast. So if you're looking to spruce up your backyard this summer with Sunjoy products, definitely go check out the website. And if you use code Jamie and Sarah at checkout, you get 13% off. So that's a pretty big discount. But we're excited to get started on this project because we want to get our backyard all dialed in so we can enjoy it this summer instead of just working on it. So stay tuned for that future project. So another thing I asked Jamie to do last night, which I was a little bit worried about, but he agreed, is to scrape the popcorn ceilings in this room. I just, I just hate them so much. And it's gonna be a lot of work. But long term, I think we're just gonna be a lot more happy with it. So he's gonna spend some time doing that. I feel a little bad, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So encourage him in the comments. All right, so at first I was against taking the texture off, mostly because um, it would be such a big project. But I think I agree with Sarah now. Um, we just have a lot of textures going on with this wood that we're trying to paint. Uh, the trim and stuff like that. So I just think it'll be a lot cleaner looking uh, without the texture. So it's actually not too bad to do. It's probably gonna take me like two and a half hours to take it all off. So then I have to skim coat it twice with mud. But after that, it'll be ready to go. <laughs> okay, so scraping the ceilings was kind of a nightmare. Uh, someone in the comments, I forget who, but they suggested buying a wider scraper, which I did. Uh, but that didn't really do the trick. I think if it was real popcorn ceiling, it would have gone faster, but this tool actually worked better because it had just more strength and more, it was more rigid for scraping. So it took me a long time. How many but, hours? Mm, four. For all of that, that's not so bad. Four to six, maybe. So four to six hours sounds pretty reasonable for scraping, but that means we're only halfway done. We still have to do the skim coat of drywall mud. So after scraping it, it kind of left still a little bit of a texture. So uh, we really want it to be like real smooth. So we're going back in a minute have to do two skim coats of mud. So I'm using this tool, drywall mud knife, uh, and then sanding between each coat. So uh, it's probably gonna be a 12 hour project. But it's gonna look good. But it's gonna look really good. You may think that that won't make a huge difference, but it, it really will, um, especially when you're in the space. It might not look much different on camera, but in person, it's gonna make a big difference. So that's what I'm telling myself anyway. Are so, you convincing yourself? Yes, so um, we're gonna keep going on it. And hopefully, this, is, this room is the last room before we can start doing floors. So I'm hoping by Monday we can start floors. That's the goal. we don't have to live like this. Yes. Seeing did my first coat of mud off. How's it look? Pretty good, I think. Hard to tell. Favorite thing. You're so uh, close, though. Least favorite thing. How are you doing? Oh, I'm very tired. <sighs> oh. How much more do you have to go? Uh, this and then that one. I'm going to be done. Should they attempt this at home? Mm, no, it's probably, probably not the safest thing to do. No, I just meant in general. Like, this is a sturdy ladder. No, stop. Not the ladder, like the spackling, um, removing of what you're doing. It's a lot of labor, more than I thought. <laughs> so. I would say one star. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so I just finished sanding the stairs. I think it was like probably a good 12 hours of my time, a much bigger project than I imagined. I had to get like between all the little nooks and crannies. It took forever, but I am finally ready to stain, I think, and I'm super excited. I saw someone on Instagram mixing stains and I really loved this mixture. So I'm gonna test it out first to make sure I really love it in person but it is gonna be half early American and half weathered oak. So I've never mixed stains before, so we're gonna do a few different swatches and see how it goes. I'm going to try it on our, these are our hardwoods, if you guys saw that video. This is like unfinished oak, which our stairs are actually pine, so it will look a little different, but I'm gonna try it on this first before I try it on the stairs to see how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna try this one by itself first before I mix anything. This is the Early American to see how it goes. So I really wanted to do um, a natural, like lighter stain on the stairs, but because there was a lot of um, sanding and stuff, I couldn't get it perfect. It just wouldn't look as good. So we're gonna stain it a little bit darker and I think it's still gonna look awesome. So. This is just the Early American. It's kind of a nice light medium. I could always add more to make it darker. It's so pretty. I really like that. So next, I will try doing half Early American, half of the Weathered Gray. Because I think the Weathered Gray is going to take away any of that like yellow undertones that I really don't like. All right, so now I got my bucket so I can mix them together. So I'm going to dump this whole they only had tiny ones of these guys. So I'm gonna dump the whole thing in. Eventually I will dump all of these together, but for now I'm just gonna do a quarter of this. I think I can figure that out, huh? Who, who believes in measuring? It's fine. We're really official over here. All right, let's see how this goes. So I did do a weathered gray stain by itself. It's hard to even tell a difference. It's a pretty natural looking stain. It just kind of grays out the wood a little bit. It's really pretty, um, but I think we have to go darker. Okay. So this is the mixture and I will show you guys when it dries. It might look a little different. And then this is just the early American. So it is slightly more grayed out. Um, I don't know how I feel yet. I'm gonna let it dry and then I will let you guys know what we decide, but at this point, I think we need to go darker. I don't know. I don't think this is gonna be dark enough. One second. Okay, this is dry now out from out in the sun. At first I wasn't sure there was a huge difference, but there definitely is and I'm super happy with it. So this side right here, this is the Early American by itself. This one is just the gray weathered oak by itself. And then this is the 50-50 mixture. So it's not a huge difference from the Early American, but I think it like took out some of the yellow tones, honestly. So we're going for it. Jamie thinks it's dark enough for our stairs to kind of cover some of those imperfections and still be light enough that like it feels modern and stuff like that. So my next step is to mix all of this together so it's a true one-to-one on, one -one ratio mixture. So we're gonna do a full, um, what is this? Quart of this guy and then four of these little pints in my bucket here and mix it really good so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we're gonna get started on the stairs. So Jamie is over doing the last coat of mud on the speckling and I am going to start staining the stairs. Jamie had the brilliant idea of doing every other stair first so that we can still use the stairs for until, until I get there. So I'm gonna start and see how this goes. Ooh, so pretty. All right, so we have stained this one, this one, and that one and we are having major issues because they all look a different color. This is old oak, apparently. This is old pine. Looks pretty bad for some reason. And then that is new pine. So we got like a yellow undertone going on 
a red undertone and a green undertone. So, looks pretty bad, don't you think? <laughs> yes. And I worked pretty hard to get here and I'm kind of sad. So, we gotta figure something out. Stay tuned. This is not going very well. Pretty disappointed. We got a lot of different colors going on, even though the, it's the exact same stain. So this is gonna be the color of the hardwood. So it'll contrast nicely, I think. I think it'll be okay. Um, I just had my heart set on like lighter wood stairs, but that's just not working out. So the choices are to either stain it really, really dark and hopefully some wood grain still comes through, but then they all match in color or just paint it. So but then when you want to paint the, the toe kicks like white or lighter? Oh, I don't know. So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. I'm Which pretty, option? Pretty discouraged. Dark stain or paint? Right? See you guys next time.